What's up, everybody? I am driving down Route 75 right now. Um, and I've got a good 70-something miles to go before I gotta do anything, so... Uh, I'm gonna record this now, and I will upload this when I get home in an hour or more, whatever. Um, maybe I'll just stay in the slow lane. Okay, so... Where to begin? Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I ask in Jesus' name, Lord, um, will you please just ensure that there's a guardian angel with me with this car as I drive and record this video, and just keep me and everybody safe. I ask for this in Jesus' name, amen. And I ask, Lord, will you please give me the right words to say what you want me to say here in this video. I ask for this in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So, the ongoing saga of my life. <laughs> the life of a prophet. So, um, since the last video, um, yesterday morning, so I did that video on, what, Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, um, about how my landlord gave me notice, blah, 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 and I have almost no money, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know what God's plan is. Um, so yesterday morning, I got contacted by a staffing agency about a job. Perfect job for me. It's data taxonomy, which is basically just classifying data, putting data into categories 40 hours a week. Right up my alley. It's pretty, as far as I'm concerned, mindless. I can just put some music on and just click, click, click for 40 hours. Perfect. Because um, I'm not really interested in doing anything else that requires too much responsibility. Um, and, uh, and, it, and it pays good, you know? And uh, so I had a phone interview with her and she said she was gonna follow up with an email. Haven't heard from her, she, so I, I don't know what's going on with that. Well, before that even happened yesterday morning, Sunday night, so I put that video up and Sunday night, you know, I put stuff up all over. I put ads up on Craigslist, roommates.com, roomies.com, next door, um, everywhere I could, right? for a place to live. So, um, Sunday night, I get contacted by a guy, and he lives up in the Knoxville region, and I'm not going to get into specifics. God doesn't want me to get into all the details, um, all, all the content, but more so just the, the process, the, the general context of the situation. And so this was a prospective new, you know, home, new place to live, domicile for me. And there was going to be some perks in it. Um, and, you know, so this person and I texted a bunch, emailed a bunch. Uh, last night we had an almost two-hour conversation, if I'm recalling correctly. Um, and this person seemed very much on my level um, in a lot of important ways and everything. Like, we were seeing eye-to-eye -eye on, on a lot of important stuff. Um, and uh, I just... You know, I felt God's peace. I definitely did not feel a lack of God's peace. Okay, let me say that. Um, but it all seemed to be going really great. It really did. And so, um, you know, I'm eager, you know, to see what God has for me, number one. And number two, you know, just on, on a human level, on a physiological level, you know, um, none of us likes uncertainty. And so the sooner I can have peace of mind about where I'm going and what's going on, you know, I, I'd like to have that. And so I made a plan today with this person to drive up there. So I drive two and a half hours, I go up there. And I was gonna start off a different way, but here we are. Alright, anyway. So I'm driving, it's cool, whatever, right? So I had text messaged him and I told him, hey, um, my, my ETA is, you know, about 1.45 p.m. So at 1.35 p.m., he sends me a message and he says that he has to get in the shower, so 10 minutes before my ETA, and tells me that if I get there before he's you know, ready or whatever to just go in the back door and poke around and, um, you know, feel free to use the, the bathroom and, and whatnot. 
and um, he made a peculiar statement about how the well water was delicious, which I found a little strange, but whatever. Um, and so, you know, already I'm like, okay, like it, it was already kind of occurring to me with this person that this person is one of those people who is not attached to their phone, does not pay attention to text messages, whatever. And so I gave him the benefit of the doubt that, okay, maybe he didn't see my ETA text message, whatever, because the, the original time that we had set was 2 p.m. So I'm like, okay, cool, well, whatever about that. Now, telling me to come inside his house, this is the South, and I did grow up out in the, out in the country myself, and I know that, you know, um, it's not unheard of for people who live out in the boondocks to leave their doors unlocked and whatnot. But in this day and age, and after what I've been through in my life, and yada, 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 that was a little tiny red flag to me. I'm like, okay, maybe he's leaving it unlocked for me, but maybe that's also just a lifestyle thing. Maybe he leaves his back door unlocked, you know? And so that was that was like a duly noted thing that I was gonna clarify with him. Like, look, like if we're gonna be living together, I want the I want the doors locked, you know, whatever. So, so I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. So I get there. Now he had told me that, you know, the driveway was a little steep, which by the way, in Tennessee, that like, People's driveways are either like way uphill or way downhill. Like, it's just ridiculous. And there's no shoulders and there's ditches on the side of the road everywhere. Like God forbid if you swerved or whatever or, or you needed to swerve to avoid an accident or something like God knows where your car is going because there's no shoulder, there's no room to pull over, there, there's nothing on, on most roads. So I get there and I immediately feel a lack of peace just upon just pulling up and just seeing the property seeing his house and so I try to drive up the driveway now he had told me he had told me that it might be a little difficult for my car well I only get a few feet and my tires start spinning in the gravel like I'm about to get stuck if I try anymore so I'm like okay reverse right so I end up like parking the car across the street on like a steep like hill on the side of the road because again there's no shoulder and I'm noticing this like heaviness this like lack of peace and so I pray and I'm like Lord I just drove two and a half hours and let me just back up so the whole time prior to me getting in the car and driving up north um, I had been asking God throughout the whole, like all the communication I've been having with this person, is this your will? If this isn't your will, please close the door. Please remove your peace. You know, if it is your will, give me confirmation. You know, the normal stuff that we pray, right? So, um, so I asked God, is it your will for me to move forward right now with this situation? And God said, no. And I said, well, that would confirm what I'm feeling, what I'm sensing right now. And so, um, let me, let me back up. So before I even asked God that, um, Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance a memory. So years ago, okay, uh, what are we talking? We're, so we're, we're talking a good, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. Um, when I lived in Georgia when I was in graduate school um, and back then I did not realize I was a prophetess I was not really walking with God okay I'm gonna be honest with you um, I was on some stupid site I think it was a dating site of some sort but anyway I was talking to some person and I foolishly made plans because I, I was in Valdosta Georgia at that point which is about a half hour above the uh, Florida state line and so I made plans to meet this person and I drove a good, I don't know, hour and a half down south to Florida to meet this person and I pull up at the house and the same thing happened. I got this lack of peace, but I wasn't really in tune at that point in my life with my own discernment, with my own connection with Holy Spirit because I was kind of in a backslidden state um, to some extent. But I still recognize like, okay, something seems, something feels off, something's off here, you know. And I text messaged the person and I said, hey, you know, I'm here. And the person said, uh, I guess I'll just stay in this lane. Um, the person texted me back and said something like, oh, just come in 
the, the back door, come in through the, the porch or the, uh, I think it was a porch or some kind of, you know, porch type room or whatever. Um, and I just got this gut, you know, I just got this like significant lack of peace and I was like, you know, like I, I knew, like get in your car and go home, do not move forward with this. And so today, I pull up, I get a lack of peace, I try to go up the driveway, I'm like physically stopped from going up the driveway. Um, Holy Spirit brings that memory from eight, nine years ago into my head out of nowhere. And so I park the car and I ask God, is it your will for me to move forward with this? And I get a no. And so I drove off. And I called my ex because I don't have a support system. For those of you who've been tracking with me, you know this, I've said it a million times. For those of you who are new, um, I don't have a support system. Um, the closest thing I have to a support system is my ex-boyfriend, who I'm really not supposed to be talking to, according to God. Um, and I'm a verbal processor, and so I like to talk things out and just kind of, even though I know what I should or shouldn't do, I like to, uh, have someone else kind of like confirm it which that's an issue of mine but whatever so I knew I knew like God was telling me like it just turn around and go home you know so I call my ex just to kind of process it with him and I'm like what do you think about all this you know and and he agreed of course and he was like April don't doubt your discernment you, you know you've got strong discernment don't doubt it you know it, how many times has your discernment been proven you know accurate just you know just go home you know and I was like yeah I know um but it, it's it was disappointing of course because I was getting my hopes up is that this on paper you know was going to be a, a a really good situation or potentially could be and what he said to me it's really interesting you know God does speak through my ex sometimes um fairly frequently actually um and he said to me, he said, you know, your life really is a crucible. And I was like, what? And he said, you know, God's not going to give you more than you can handle. But he said, like, I forget exactly what he said now. Holy Spirit, bring it back to me, please. Um, I don't remember exactly what he said, but here's the point. Here's, here's what I know God wants me to share with y'all is... You know, recently I heard somebody say in a video, you know, um, I can't think of the right phrasings, but basically, according to your faith, okay, according to your faith. So, for those of you who've been tracking with me, you know that 2021 has been nothing but a freaking roller coaster and nothing but tests for me so far this year, okay, regarding places to live particularly and some other stuff, right, some other areas of, of life. Um, I have close to no money right now. I have no unemployment. I have no job. And I am just living my life by faith that somehow, some way, God's going to provide for me. And he has. And he has been. But, like, the stakes keep getting higher, so to speak. Like, more and more is, is at risk. Like, there, there's, there's less and less stuff here to give me a sense of security. And I am more and more in a situation, in circumstances to have to depend on God, to have to trust God, to have to have, to have to put my faith and my hope in Yahweh, my provider, okay? And that is the Christian walk in general, but the, but the point that Holy Spirit really wants me to punctuate is, right, thank you, Holy Spirit. God, the, the Christian walk is many things. It, it's, it's a walk of recovery. That's another topic regarding inner healing and all that. But it is a walk of faith, as the scripture tells us, right? We walk by faith, not by sight, not by our circumstances, but by faith. You know, the, the what's that verse? The faith is the evidence of things unseen. I think I'm quoting that correctly. Um, right? So God will increasingly test you stretch you um, to increase your
your faith, to increase your capacity for faith, to trust Him, okay? And so, the more that you get accustomed to that, the more that you're not phased by it, the more that it ain't no thing, right? Like, a lot of people in my situation right now would be freaking out, freaking out, crying, you know, freaking out, drinking, you know, backsliding, whatever, right? But I'm not. Why? Because this has been something that God has been doing with me at a very slow, gradual pace for a long time now. And so now, I'm accustomed to it. It doesn't really phase me. Now I'm just like, okay, God, I just drove two and a half hours for nothing. You're telling me to go home. What's next? Right? Move it on. What's next? What is your will, Lord? Right? And so, yeah, you could go with the rationale of like, okay, so if that's the case, if, if you're at that point and God knows you're at that point, why do you, why is he still testing you more? Right? Well, first of all, I am a prophet and I do have a ministry. Okay. So the life of a prophet is a crucible. My ex was completely accurate in that statement. And I even prayed about that after I talked to him and before I'm coming on here, um, I, I asked God, I said, you know, is, is that part of the point you want me to make that a, a prophet's life is a crucible and yes it is okay and a prophet has more responsibility and a prophet goes through more persecution and a prophet goes through more more refining fires and testing and all of that and that is for what it's for the edification of the rest of the body of Christ okay it's we prophets um can be forerunners prophets uh are what's the word uh, is Pathfinder the right word? Pathfinder, Trailblazer, okay, Forerunner, okay? Um, we go through stuff before y'all do so that we can kind of give you a heads up so that you're not psych like, so that you're not completely psychologically taken off guard when stuff comes your way, okay? But it, it, we're here to teach you, we're here to guide you, okay? Um, so that's part of why I am continuing to be tested because I've only had this ministry you know, for since, uh, what, March, April of 2020. Um, and my channel's growing, you know, and so, like, God is trying to reach more people and, and yada, yada, yada. So there is that purpose that not everyone else has. Not everyone holds or is the office of prophet, okay? But here's the second point that does apply to everyone, okay? And it is this. And I'm, I'm probably going to say the same thing again, but I'm going to try to say it differently. But like, God, what's that verse? Thank you, Holy Spirit. What's that verse? That we are being, what, transformed into the image of Christ, right? This side of heaven, as we say in Christianese, we are constantly being processed by the Holy Spirit, okay? We are constantly the clay in the potter's hands, okay? And God, in a sense, regarding what we're talking about right now, is never satisfied. He wants more of you, okay? Um, and again, let's go back to the analogy that scripture gives us, okay? He's the husband, we are the bride, okay? We are the wife, and the heart of a woman always needs to be pursued and pursue can look like many different things, okay? Um, but even even men too, okay? It, it's, it's just something that makes us all feel good when we're trusted, when we are respected, when people um, put their faith in us, right? Like that, when, when, when someone trusts you, that is an affirmation, you know? That is a form of, um, in a way, it's a form of love. It's a form, you know, it's positive regard, you know? Um, and so, God is always going to take you higher and deeper, and he's always going to be stretching you and testing you and increasing your capacity of what you can take, of what you can endure, of what you can tolerate, okay? 
okay? And why is that? Because he wants you to trust him more. He wants you to have faith in him more, okay? And this process is the same as lifting a dumbbell, right? With, with, with muscles, right? So the muscles have to be broken down a little bit, but I hate to use the phrase, but but, but they, they do what? Your muscles build back better, right? Like, it's right? So like, that's what happens is like your, your muscles, like the end result is that your muscle gets stronger. It gets, you know, I don't want to necessarily say bigger, but well, yeah, that kind of applies here in terms of like your, your capacity gets bigger, right? Like, so when you work out and your muscles grow, you can lift bigger things, heavier things because you have more muscle, right? You have more capacity for lifting heavy weight and whatnot, right? That's what this is. That's what this spiritual process is. Okay. So I just drove two and a half hours. It's my gas my time, it's mileage on my car, it's wear and tear on my tires, right? I could have been home being productive, going through my preps and getting things organized and packing up and getting ready to move. And so the question is, okay, God, what was the point of this? Well, first of all, again, I'm a I'm yes, I'm, I'm a prophet and I'm a teacher, okay? I hold two offices. Um, and so that is the cost. That is me picking up my cross and being a living sacrifice to serve the body of Christ, God will put a cost on me, on my resources, for the benefit of the rest of the body so that I can come on here and share through experiences to teach you guys spiritual truths. So that's one thing that applies to me as a teacher and a prophet. But when this happens to just Joe Schmo average Christian, it's that's part of the testing, okay? Now, could you argue lots of different things or question or ponder lots of different things? Did I miss it? Did God maybe tell me not to do this and, and I did it? You could argue that. I've asked him that. Lord, did I miss something? Did you tell me not to make this two and a half hour trip? And I I was told no. Like he, he told me to go on this trip. Okay. All right. Now, if I had ignored what my discernment told me, what Holy Spirit, what, so our Holy Spirit connects with our spirit, right? So if I ignored that, that lack of peace, lack of Jesus's peace that I felt when I pulled up, if I ignored all of these different things, the fact that I couldn't drive up the driveway, the fact that that memory came back to me, um, right? If I ignored all that and went through with this, would something bad have happened? Maybe, maybe not. We're not allowed to know the future, okay? That's crossing a spiritual boundary. That's when you cross over into the uh, witchcraft realm and all that, okay? We're not allowed to know what, what the future, you know, hypothetically would have held for us, okay? But if you want to try to ponder all that, could you, you know, there, there's always possibilities. Could this person have had a demon or multiple demons that might have acted up and manifested and somehow been a detriment to me? That's always a possibility with anybody, okay? Could this person somehow have been connected to someone who did witchcraft or something and that person might have done witchcraft on me because I was associated with this person? Again, that's always a possibility, okay? You don't know, but God does know, okay? God does know. Um, and so even though everything on paper, so to speak, theoretically seemed great about this potential perspective living arrangement and even though after talking to this guy communicating with this guy in depth um everything felt felt peaceful everything seemed great god said no and so i have to obey that strictly 100 percent i was there's that jersey accent coming out 100 <laughs> percent faith trust just blind faith you said no lord okay i accept that Moving on, okay? You have to trust that he knows best. And why is this so especially important right now? Because we're in the tribulation. Now granted, yeah, S SHTF hasn't happened yet, really. I mean, it's happened in little pockets here and there, like like the, the Texas outage, you know, and, and you know, little things, but like overall it hasn't happened quite yet. But the Lord is preparing us, okay? We are a very special generation, and the Lord is preparing us. And 
part of what is going to be so vital. I, I would say the most important, number one vital thing is discernment, okay? I mean, that goes across the board no matter what generation you've been. As a Christian, discernment is always key, but especially in the tribulation, you are going to need to have discernment. You can't have it if you're not born again, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you're not abiding in Christ, if you're not grafted into the vine of Christ and abiding in Christ, okay? That means staying, remaining in Christ, okay? Um, if you don't have discernment, first of all, not good. But even if you have it, you can't. The like second part to that is don't ignore it. You have to be able to recognize it and you have to obey it, whatever it says, okay? If something looks good on paper, if something looks really great theoretically, um, and let me just say that this arrangement, again, I'm not gonna get into any details, but like this would have been a really good arrangement for me financially, okay? Like you have to uh, be willing to count the cost, you have to be willing to let go of whatever benefit you perceived that might have come your way through whatever path that you were you're about to go on, or you were you were considering going on. If God says no, nope, that's it. You have to be willing to just say, okay, I'm willing to let go of whatever potential might have been there for whatever financial benefit. Whatever it was that was appealing to you, you have to be willing to just say, all right, Lord, I trust you. I trust you that if I go this way, it won't be good for whatever reason. And that's that, okay? And let me just, and what Holy Spirit, what I'm hearing right now is that verse that says that he rewards those who diligently seek him, right? So even though you may feel disappointed and feel like you are at a loss. Like right now, I'm at a loss. Like I barely have any money. Okay, I, I had a ha ha bleh, 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 bleh. I had a half tank of gas before I left, so I went and filled up my gas tank, used up twenty twenty one dollars of, of my of the little bit of money that I have to fill up this gas tank, using up gas, right? But I just have to trust. Okay, Lord, you'll provide. You will re you will replenish, right? I have to trust that there's a purpose. And even if, even if you want to argue that I messed up somehow, some way in this whole thing, you have to know that, okay, what is, what's the promise that God gives us? Okay. He says, his word says that he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called to his purpose. I love him and I know I'm called to his purpose. Okay. So even if you want to argue and say, oh, April, you must have screwed up which I asked God if I screwed up and I was told no. But even if you want to say that, or even if I did, even if I t totally screwed up and I wasn't supposed to make this trip up north, whatever, right? God still is going to use it for good somehow, some way. Even if it's just to teach you a lesson. Even if it's just a, a, a learning curve for you, okay? But, the, the, but, but that's the thing with that too, is you have to have a teachable heart and you have to be willing to learn those lessons. Because if you don't, God will keep bringing you into the circumstances to learn that lesson okay and I've been there too don't 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 do that don't be that person um, although we all are right um, so so here I am I have not heard back from that lady from the staffing agency Apparently, God is telling me no go on this living situation. And so here I am back at square one, where I was two days ago of, okay, so I have to move out Thanksgiving weekend, pretty much. I have to move out before or by December 1st. I barely have any money. And uh, I'm at the mercy of Yahweh. But I've been through the ringer enough. I've been through enough tests now, enough that... Even though, yes, physiologically, I might have a little bit of anxiety. I might chew my fingers a little bit. You know, I might be like a little, I might have that little level of anxiety, you know. But like, I know, I know that I know that I know. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. I know he's got a plan. If he didn't have a plan, I mean, well, we, we could go on forever. But he told me when I even moved into where I'm at that you're going to be here three months. You're going to be here through November. Well, okay, now 
I gotta get out by the end of November. That lines up, right? So, I mean, it just, I know he's got a plan and I know he's totally using my life right now as something to build y'all's faith. And you know what? I'm flattered, I'm honored. Um, hallelujah, you know? So I, I have no idea, you know? I mean, well, here, actually here's something that's interesting. So I went and opened up a local bank account yesterday and this bank that I, that I was led to um, is only in the Chattanooga area. And I went and opened it up um, and if you're asking why, as far as I know why, it's because I am downsizing. I'm trying to sell my mammon. And so when I sell stuff, um, sometimes I get cash, right? I mean, some, sometimes people do cash app and whatever, but I get cash and then how do I get that cash into my checking account so I can put it towards bills or whatever, right? So I, I get a local bank and then I link those two, my, my two bank accounts because my, 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 my main bank is an online bank. So I just link the money or link the banks and transfer the money. But anyway, so this lady is, you know, opening my account. She's taking forever, blah, blah, blah. So I told her, I said, hey, you know, I, I might be moving up to the Knoxville area, um, you know, and I was asking her if, if there's any banks, any uh, branches up in the Knoxville region, which there's not. And you know what she said? She goes, you're not moving up to Knoxville. Just like that. And I'm like, okay. So on my way up north today, I recalled that and I like, in, in Jesus' name, I bound it, I broke it, I canceled it, I threw it into the abyss, right? And, then, and now after God told me no and I'm heading home, I'm like, wait a minute, Lord. Like Holy Spirit brought it back to me again. And what Holy Spirit, actually, I just realized that. That might've been God telling me on the way up here, like this ain't happening. Um, like prepare yourself. I'm, prepare yourself. I'm, I'm about to give you a total roadblock. Um, so, hey, Jersey plate. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Jersey. I miss Jersey. Um, so, uh, get my thoughts straight here. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, she says to me, you're not moving to Knoxville. And so I ask God now on, on the way home, I'm like, that wasn't a word curse, was it, Lord? It was her speaking truth. It was her like prophesying and she didn't even know what that no know, know that that's what she was doing. So pay attention sometimes because you could have a perfect stranger prophesy truth into your life that you don't even realize and they don't even realize. Um, but we shall see. We shall see if, you know, I, I don't always hear everything correctly. I am human. But I think God might be telling me that I'm not leaving the Chattanooga area just yet. So we shall see. Uh, so anyway, continued, um, requests for prayers and donations. Um, I haven't gotten one donation, which tells me I've got to have a job here soon. God's got to have something or, cause normally, normally if I come on here and just say, Hey guys, I'm hurting. Usually I get like something coming in. Nothing came in and that's fine. That tells me that God's got a job for me, which is what was prophesied to me back in August and it's what I just felt God has been telling me for months that there is going to be a work from home job and you know so I'm just living by faith you know so and uh, my poor kitty cat by the way today's Tigress's birthday she's nine years old and I couldn't afford to get her a birthday present poor kitty um, I gave her some canned food but that was about it I'm sharing way too much now anyway so I'll shut up but that's what God wanted me to share with y'all. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. So over a half an hour. All right, so I will upload this when I get home here today. What is it, four o'clock already? Um, and uh, I bless you all in Jesus' name. I hope this was edifying to somebody out there.